Demerara and Essequibo 99.1 FM. Burby's 99.5 FM. Kite Radio. Radio. Good evening and welcome to this evening's newscast right here on Kaichu Radio. I am Kevin Smith. Let's get to the front page comment of today's Kaichu News before we get to our news in detail, shall we? Former President Donald Ramutar, ably advised perhaps by former Minister of Natural Resources Robert Prasad, signed away for free the fabulously rich Kanji oil block. With the stroke of a pen, part of the inheritance of the Guyanese people was signed away. When our leaders busy themselves signing away secretly and for free parts of our rich oil patrimony, they destroy the future of our people. Guyana's oil belongs to all Guyanese, and not only the PPP, the AFC, and the PNC who have shortchanged the nation. Guyanese must not cower in silence. They must stand up and denounce this grand betrayal. All Guyanese must condemn the giveaway of the country's oil wealth. And now for the news in detail. If it is the intention of Guyanese authorities to have a local content policy and legislation that allow for the progressive participation of citizens in the oil sector, there are two key ingredients that must be present in the formulation of that document. According to Chatham House expert Dr. Valerie Marcel, the two major ingredients are clear definitions on what qualifies as local content and robust systems to monitor the performance of companies in using local businesses as well as their training and hiring citizens. The industry expert said it is critical to have a clear definition on local content as ambiguous terms open the floodgates for loopholes and that would be exploited. In other news, former member of the AFC and attorney at law, Charandas Prasad, has returned to Guyana and has his attention focused on contributing to the development of the country. Prasad spoke excitedly about his homecoming after spending 22 months in Canada. His exile followed his vote in the December 21, 2018 no-confidence motion against the former APNU AFC regime. The passage of this motion was the proverbial first domino that fell in the coalition's plummet from power. The attorney at law maintains that he has not been offered a job by the PPPC government or any other institution for that matter. He stated, however, that he may consider leaving his legal profession if that will aid him in better serving the people. In all the news, a Maruka man was charged today for murdering a 21-year-old farmer whose body was found floating in a Parika Bakdam canal. The suspect, Randy Williams, appeared before Magistrate Zamina Ali C. Paul at the Lenora Magistrate's Court. It is alleged that Williams hit the victim, Tamal Harris, to his head with a plank of wood and left his lifeless body in the canal where he was found by farmers in the area on Tuesday, October 13, 2020. Meanwhile, the charges against the Minister of Legal Affairs and Attorney General Anil Nandlal that alleged the theft of law books was on Friday discontinued. Following a letter from the DPP, Shalimar Al-Haq, Ali Haq, sorry, to Magistrate for Bayo Azor in the Georgetown Magistrates Courts, the charges were discontinued based on the directions in the letter. Nandlal had denied the charges, which alleged that between May 18, 2015 and May 29, 2015, while being a bailey in his then capacity as Attorney General, he fraudulently converted 14 Commonwealth law reports valued at $2,313,853, property of the Ministry of Legal Affairs, to his own use and benefit. Let's tell you now that whenever oil companies set out to acquire and develop resource fields, their host governments would do well to ensure that the cleanup and liabilities for any environmental disaster are set to be taken care of by a capable and lauded insurer that, that should be with the track record and finances necessary for the job. 
This is because oil spills, like many other disasters known to occur in the industry, have devastating and lasting effects. These disasters are so grave that they wound the ecosystems and economies of multiple countries, costing billions of US dollars. Some nations never fully recover. With this in mind, any president signing deals away to oil companies would be expected to secure provisions which ensure that the country is always protected. Former President and Minister of Petroleum Donald Ramatar did not. When he signed away the Kanji block on March 4, 2015, Ramatar not only granted the block to a company without the track record, finances and capacity to acquire and develop the block, but he also gave this local company the right to self-insure against the possibility of some of the most devastating man-made disasters the world has ever seen. And moving on, the unprecedented economic blows that have been unleashed by the COVID-19 pandemic has forced the International Monetary Fund to further downgrade its growth forecasts for 2020. According to the financial institution, Guyana's 2020 Real Gross Domestic Product, or GDP, is expected to see a 26.2% growth rate instead of the previously announced 53%. This amounts to the second downward growth revision for 2020 of Guyana's economy by the IMF. Let's tell you now that a handyman of Donrad Street, Newtown Kitty, was on a Saturday night executed in front of his friend's home at Seafield Sapphire, Greater Georgetown. 27-year-old Sion London, also known as Gaza, was riddled with bullets just around 18 hours 35. According to a police report, London and his wife had paid his friend a visit earlier that evening. The report stated that London was chatting with the friend and the two were sitting on a bench in front of the house. The friend said the two men approached them and started firing shots. He threw himself to the ground and remained still until the gunmen left. When he got up, he saw London lying still on the ground. Police have since received information that one of the assassins might be a 30-year-old man from Sapphire. Investigators noted, too, that this was not the first attempt on London's life. Meanwhile, a 21-year-old Pomeroon man has admitted to killing his drinking buddy over rum on Saturday at a shop located at Grant Enterprise, Pomeroon River, in Region 2. According to the police, Elon Benjamin was slain around 23 hours. 33-year-old Benjamin and his alleged killer were at the time imbibing at the shop along with some other friends. It was during the session, an argument erupted between Benjamin and the suspect over the liquor. The quarrel escalated and Benjamin reportedly dealt him two lashes and two chops with a cutlass. In retaliation, the suspect pulled a knife from his waist and allegedly stabbed Benjamin twice to his right rib cage area. Benjamin collapsed and the suspect ran away. And that brings us to the end of this evening's newscast. I am Kevin Smith. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned. Coming up next is the National Outlook with GHK Lal. Want value for your advertising dollar? Then place your ads on Kaicho Radio's newscasts. Streamed live on six different mediums, reaching hundreds of thousands. Advertise today and watch your dollar grow. Call us on 225-8465.